of our most basic ways of communicating has changed over and over in the last century. Mailing a letter or snail mail has gone from one of the only ways to stay in touch to pretty much the dinosaur of document delivery. But way before email and overnight express services, the fastest and most prestigious way to get your mail was when it had a fancy stamp with a little airplane on it. Airmail may seem commonplace, even quaint nowadays, in a world where electronic mail travels the globe in an instant. Yet there was a time when mail generally traveled by train, and mail that traveled by air, hence airmail, was a distinguished but also dangerous endeavor. In 1903, the Wright brothers had their first successful flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Not long after, experiments flying mail were already being tried. Matt Anderson is curator of transportation at the Henry Ford, and he takes us back to the days when airmail was just taking off. When did airmail flights begin? Experiments started as early as 1911, but uh, people thought at that point it just wasn't practical. There was no way that airmail could be reliable. Well, it wasn't until a few years later when they actually did start on a regular schedule in 1918. And the first route was from Washington, D.C. up to New York City with a stop in Philadelphia. And Woodrow Wilson was president then. He was, and he was actually present at the takeoff of the first airmail flight, though it was something of an inauspicious start. The pilot lost his way and crashed into a field. He was all right but the story illustrates how dangerous flying was in those early days. What were the big risks with airmail? There were some risks for the pilot for sure. For one, the airplanes just weren't all that good yet. Add to that, no radios, no markers, no satellite navigation, and flying in open cockpits in inclement weather. Did the rapid popularization of airmail help advance aviation in general? It absolutely did. I would say that airmail laid down all of the major groundwork for the development of a reliable passenger aviation network. So things like beacons, they would set up towers about 50 feet tall with lights on them about 10 miles apart. And those at nighttime became kind of lighted skyways to guide the planes where they were going. Any famous airmail pilots? Yeah, I think the most famous airmail pilot was Charles Lindbergh. And uh, he had some great stories uh, flying. He crash landed a few times, certainly obviously survived each time. One of those landings, though, he was uh, in the plane. He heard it sort of sputtering, running out of fuel. So he jumped out, parachuted to the ground, heard the plane crash, went over to the wreckage, found that the mail had not been damaged. So what did he do? He picked it up and walked it to the nearest post office. Neither wind, nor rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor a crash landing will keep this mail from being delivered. The mail must go through, yes. Yeah. With the advent of airmail, postage stamps started to adopt a new look. The airmail stamps indicated prestige, and they carried a corresponding price tag. An airmail stamp when they first started airmail in 1918 was 24 cents. That compares with three cents for a regular rail delivered letter. So you're looking at eight times the price. In 1925, Congress passed the Kelly Act, which privatized the airmail service. In 1975, airmail became the standard for domestic mail delivery. By 1995, international airmail followed suit. Airmail was the new normal, allowing us to bid farewell to the airmail distinction. So in other words, au revoir par avion.